explain the difference between a digital paper and a digital paper overlay. So a digital paper is basically the end result of an overlay. So I've got an example here. It's usually a JPEG file, which is an image file format. And what it is, is the pattern with a color background. So it's already been selected by the person who created the digital paper. And you can't customize it, you can't recolor it, you can't change the size of the pattern, um, of, like the size of the polka dots, you can't change the spacing between them. It's basically just a file that you can use for your products. Now you can use a, a digital paper um, in Microsoft Word, in Photoshop, in any basically any image editing software, um, including Canva, PicMonkey, they're both free um, online tools. GIMP is a free download and Photoshop is paid. So you can use these with, um, with your designs when you're creating them. So you could create stationery, you could upload it to a site like Zazzle and have a mug, uh, have the pattern printed on a mug or have a calendar, a mouse pad, etc. So I recommend digital paper if you're just getting started in graphic design, you're not sure how to make your own um, paper overlays or you're not interested in learning how to do that, you just want to make products with pretty patterns, you just want someone to have already done the work for you in creating the pattern and you just want to create the end um, result or the end product. But if you're interested in creating your own patterns and um, having more flexibility and freedom to design a pattern that you really want, then I recommend a paper overlay. So these are sort of the next step down from a digital paper. So we're not actually designing a pattern. What we're doing is taking a pattern that someone has already designed, but it's in a template format. So we're not designing the pattern, but we can still customize it a bit. So by customize it a bit, I mean you can change the colors. So these are, this is one of the um, paper overlays or pattern overlays. You don't have to use them to create um, a digital paper. As I've just said before, you can create stationery with it. You can have a mug printed, a mouse pad. You can print it on clothing, etc., fabric. Um, so when you receive one of my pattern overlay templates, you'll receive a Photoshop file format and also these other ones which are in PNG file format. So PNG file format means that it has a transparent background. So if we just double click on one of these, we can see that we've got a polka dot here, but all these areas are transparent, so we can add any color that we want. So with the digital paper overlay, you can choose what color if you don't like the color. So if I like this pattern, this polka dot pattern, but I didn't want it in pink, then I would need to find an overlay that has just the polka dot where you can choose your own color. Now these are actually quite affordable because remember once you purchase these you can use them in an unlimited number of times. So you can create as many different colored polka dot patterns as you like. They're a template that you can reuse again and again whereas a digital paper in just one color well you can really only use it in pink. You can't change the color or create a new pattern with it. But with these because they're layered so this is one of the polka dot layers. If I click on the other one this is the other half of the polka dot. So these dots fit um, on this one in between the gaps of the other one. So it's probably easier if I show you in Photoshop. So if you open up Photoshop and double left click on one of the on the PSD file for one of my overlays, we can open it up and see that each of these are saved in a separate layer in the layers menu and we can customize them by turning on and off the layers that we do and don't want to see. You can also change the background color, you can change the color of the dots. If you don't want black dots, you can make them white or you could make them pink with a blue background. You've got lots more customization options with a pattern overlay. My pattern overlays are saved in the separate PNG files for use in programs such as GIMP, which is a free version. Um, but I also save them in Photoshop file format, so if you have Photoshop, you can easily use them. So if you want to change the color of these, all you need to do is create a new layer, come over to the rectangle tool, and choose your fill color. So you can pick any color that you want from Photoshop's um, pre-selected -color, pre color swatches, or if you click on this color picker tool, you can literally pick any color you can think of. You can have any sort of shade of pink that you like, or if you want a shade of blue or green, etc. There's so many options, 
and you can pick um, enter in the RGB code or the six digit hex code if you know the exact color that you want to use. I recommend sites such as Design Seeds if you're looking for some color inspiration. There's also um, there's a whole bunch of online color tools. I'll include a couple below this video for you to check out if you need some color inspiration. So once you've found what color you want to use, you just select OK. And then off the edge of the pattern template, you're going to left click and drag to fill the pattern with the color. So we've got this mint color. If you want to double left click, you can rename it to any color that you want. And then all you need to do is right click and choose create clipping mask. So now we have a polka dot pattern that is mint and black. So the other great thing with overlays is because each of these are saved in a separate layer, so it's not just this layer which is just one color for all of the polka dots, I've got the dots saved in two separate layers, you can make multicolored patterns. So you can't do that with digital paper, you can't choose your own color combinations, you can't experiment with colors, you can only use the colors that someone else, the person who has designed the digital paper has chosen for you. So if you want to create a pattern for a logo or your branding and you want it to match your brand colors, you would need a paper overlay or a pattern overlay, whatever you want to call it. So if you create a new layer and then come back to the shape tool and choose a different color, let's go with this pink purple color, and then left click and drag with that shape tool selected, come over to the move tool and then right click and choose create clipping mask. So now I have a mint and purple polka dot pattern. The other thing you can do is if you decide that you want these dots to be purple and these ones mint, you can quickly swap it around. So you can change what colors you want to appear where. So this one's really handy if you're going to do a stripe pattern. You might want to do multicolored stripes, but you want, might want the order to be um, purple, green, blue instead of green, pink, purple, or whatever order that you want to arrange them in. So it's really handy for multicolored patterns, um, chevrons as well. So I do prefer pattern overlays. Digital papers are good if you're starting out with graphic design or you just want to make a product quickly or if you just see a pattern that someone has made and you like the colors that they've chosen then by all means purchase a digital paper. But if you want something that you can customize to your own liking then you would need a um, pattern overlay or a digital paper overlay it's, it means the same thing whatever you want to call it. So we can have the polka dots in a color but with these we can also change the background. So if I decided that I wanted white dots which I already have layers saved in white and I wanted a colored background. So let's say I want a mint background. I can press Control J to duplicate and then just bring this down and make sure it's behind your overlay layer. So I could put it in this menu, um, this section of the menu if I wanted to. Just make sure it's not above your overlay layer. So now I've got a mint polka dot, um, a white polka dot with a mint background. I can change this to a purple background. I can make as many patterns as I want, as many different colors, and I can alternate them. So if I wanted to, I could have a purple background and I could have mint dots. If you drag it above the polka dot layer, right click and choose create clipping mask. And I'm just going to turn that layer back on. So now I've got a purple dot, uh, sorry, a mint dot and purple background. So you can do multicolored um, color combinations and if you want to create a two color tone pattern, so if you wanted these to be a lighter um, pinky purple color and this one as this color still, just create a copy of that layer, drag it up above your polka dot layer, hide the mint layer. So at the moment it's all of this pinky purple color, but if you change the opacity, so if we drop this back to say 80, we've now got a two-tone pattern. So we've got the light pink dot and then the colored, solid color background, the um, darker shade of that color. You can go lighter if you want, you can go 50%. Make sure that you're doing this with a white pattern overlay, not a black one, because the black one will make it a darker color. So I'll show you what I mean. If we create a copy of this one um, and bring it down to behind, I'm just gonna turn these layers off, and bring it down behind the polka dot layer. I'm gonna bring that one down on top of my overlay. Right click create clipping mask and turn that layer on. See how they're darker? So we've now got a 
background that's lighter and then our polka dots are darker. And if I change the opacity of these down to say 50%, because I'm clipped this to a black overlay layer, it's actually making them darker, not lighter. So you can use this if you want to create this effect, but if you want the dots to be lighter, you need to clip it to a white overlay. If you want them to be darker, clip them to a black overlay. So logic, white's lighter if you want lighter dots, black is darker if you want darker dots. So there's so many different ways that you can customize pattern overlays um, when they're saved as separate layers, and you can also just use just the one color if you want to just make a... Uh, like a white polka dot with a pink background or a pink dot with a white background. So they give you lots more color customization and flexibility. The other thing that you can do is change the size of the pattern. So if you were creating a note card and you were using a um, you only had an A4 size paper no wait let's change that. Okay so let's say you wanted to make a calendar and it's a big calendar. It's one you're going to print and use as a message center in your kitchen and it's 16 by 20 inches but the paper overlay that you've got is only or the digital paper that you've got is only um, a letter size so that means if you scale it up it's going to reduce in image quality and become a little blurry but if you've got a pattern overlay it will retain its quality image quality better than a digital paper. So if you want to enlarge the size of it, you would need a pattern overlay or a Photoshop pattern file, which is essentially what you um, use to add this to your template. That's going a step further though again. So you've got digital paper, a digital paper overlay, and then you've got a Photoshop pattern file. So a Photoshop pattern file is what you um, create to end up with this. So there's sort of three levels. You've got the beginner, which is digital paper, Medium level of, um, not really difficulty, but just level of design is your overlay. And then full customization is learning how to make the pattern from scratch. And then um, you can adjust the size and the scale, etc. So I'll show you an example of a pattern. If I go File, New, just use 12 by 12 inches. So if you go to the Paint Bucket tool, change it from foreground, which is this color here. And we change this to pattern. We've got a whole bunch of patterns that I have created um, which we can use. So if you purchase a pattern overlay, you can customize even further than an over. Um, if you purchase, sorry, a Photoshop pattern file, you can customize further than just an overlay. Or the next step is to actually learn how to make these from scratch. And I do have an e-course where I show you how to do that if you're interested. So I've got a pattern um, selected. If you left click, you can apply it to the template. So this is that pattern that I've used before. And if I create a new layer, and then I'm just going to hide that one, left click. So this is how I created those two layers of polka dots, which we used in this template here. So then you can change the um, size and the scale if you want. So like I was talking about before, if we were creating a calendar, let's say it was a, we wanted to make a 16 by 20 inch, so a really big calendar, and select OK. You can use the paint bucket uh, well, the paint bucket tool and you change it to pattern to create it as a pattern bucket, I guess. Then you left click. See how we've still got, when it eventually applies, that same pattern and it's just at a bigger print and we don't have to lose any loss of quality or color um, getting pixely because we've applied it to this larger canvas size. So it will fill any size template that you want it to be when you've got a pattern file. If you were reducing a, um, say, a letter size template onto a really big, um, so like a really huge poster size, it may become a bit pixely. So that is when you would need a pattern file because it's already saved. When you make these, you're saving just one of these. So the image quality is retained no matter how many times you replicate it on your template because you don't have to enlarge it the pattern that you've got is a tileable pattern so it will repeat as many times as necessary to fill that larger canvas size. So if you wanted to resize this down you can do that if you click on um, your first dot layer hold down shift and click on the um, other dot layer then press control T hold down shift to maintain the proportions if you don't hold down shift the pattern can get distorted so it could become ovals instead of dots um, Oops, I'm just going to escape out of that. So Control T, 
on your keyboard, hold down shift, left click and drag, we can make it um, smaller again. So if you're interested in making pattern overlays and you're not sure what size to make them, I recommend going with 12 by 12 inches because most people who are purchasing them, um, if you save them as a digital paper, will be using them for small objects, so things like stationery, usually no bigger than letter size. So if they're making a um, calendar or a notepad or something like that or a notebook cover, it'll usually be letter size. So if you make it 12 by 12 inches, that means they will be scaling down. They won't need to enlarge the print to fill that product. So there's less chance of the image quality being reduced. So if in doubt, I recommend going with 12 by 12 inches. Um, so depending on what you actually want to create will determine whether you want a digital paper, a pattern overlay, or a Photoshop pattern file, or whether you actually want to learn how to make patterns yourself. Basically, a digital paper you can't customize. It's something that someone else has already created um, and you can't do any changes to it. I'll show you what happens when you try and recolor it to explain what I mean a little bit better. So if we take a digital paper, left click and drag to bring it into Photoshop and then press enter to add it to our template. If I zoom in and decide I want to change it to this purpley color, paint bucket tool selected, change it to foreground. I can left click and it's going to ask me to rasterize. So rasterize means that you can't make any changes to it. Um, so just select OK. Um, it doesn't really matter because it's a JPEG, but if you were rasterizing, for example, a pattern template, then the files may become a little blurred. So if we left click on this background, we can change the color, but if you zoom in, you'll notice that the dots are now a little pixely. So that means the image quality is reduced. So if you take a digital paper and you keep recoloring it, so let's say I make it this coral color, you click again, each time you do that, it's going to get more pixely and the file quality is going to reduce. And because I've gone from a dark color to a light color, we can see just a bit of a shadow here from that darker purpley blue that we used. So it's creating a real low quality image file. And if you use this on a product, it's going to look pretty bad when it's printed. And your customer, if you're creating things that you're going to sell, is not going to be happy with the image quality. So we can see again when I did that, it's become more pixely and blurred again. So when you zoom out, it's not too bad, but when you zoom in, you can see that it starts to get real pixely. So I do advise against recoloring digital papers. If you want to choose your own colors, you would need a digital paper overlay. So I hope that explains some of the differences and cleared up any confusion between them. Um, if you have any questions, just let me know. You can send me an email at all about the house Etsy, all in lowercase letters at gmail.com.